Get this 11 to 1 weekdays on the Triple M network. Uh, yeah, oh, get this on Triple M. Oh, is it with uh, Tony Martin? And uh, who's the other one, Chuck? <laughs> no, not Chuck, I'm sorry, I was thinking of uh, Countdown Revolution circa 1989. I don't know what came over me. I'm uh, terribly sorry. No, it's Ed Cavalli, isn't it? Yes, no, I enjoy his work on uh, on the commercial breaks with the unusual helmet of hair. Yes, it's idiotic, but uh, nonetheless, I'm sure it's uh, shifting poultry. Do get this. I hope you are intending to do a lot more segments about the dangers of soft drinks in our schools. Yeah, soft drinks. So you have seen the bloody news that there's uh, kiddies everywhere just getting really f- obese because of uh, the soft drink. Uh, menace. Well, let's not, uh, you know, deny it. We're turning into a nation of f***ing bombas and uh, unless somebody comes down hard on soft drinks and people who uh, who peddle them, I don't think we're going to get anywhere as a nation and I think we can uh, say goodbye to, uh, you know, green and gold. Um, yes, look, I'm quite happy with the, the program by and large. I think that Nick Herschel thing went on a bit, but, you know, uh, there could possibly be more... Uh, Emphasis on brevity. I think that might do them well. You know, before long you'll have to be, you know, feeding them with a, a bit of sandwich on the end of a stick or something, you know, craning them to school. Uh, they might want to think perhaps about um, maybe a few hundred thousand less uh, nicknames for Richard Marsland. You know, I think leave the poor man alone. He's got his uh, own problems to deal with, clearly. Uh, in other areas of his life, I think that's fairly uh, apparent from his um, interjections uh, from time to time, which seem of a, a dubious nature, I must say. Um, there seems to be a veiled reference from time to time to some sort of girlfriend. I'm suspecting a cardboard cutout or, or perhaps uh, a ghost. Before you know it, you've got uh, a nation of diabetics on your hands, people wobbling up the street being filmed by current affairs programs from the Nick Down for a by montage of diabetic statistics. You know, it's a, a burgeoning industry and uh, it all goes back to soft drinks in schools. Ed Cavalier seems obsessed with eating and uh, admitted to your golf for some reason. I think that's odd. Uh, Tony Martin persists with his uh, uh, limited range of impressions including old people complaining. That sort of, uh, must have been 1997 for my liking. Hello, get this. This is David Bowie calling to say like some cat from Japan. There's a lot of alarmist talk uh, given, but where there's a certain amount of truth, uh, there's smoke. Uh, where there's soft drinks, there's uh, fire. Oh, I've hurt my head. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Many of those were recorded late at night. Uh, What time was the David Bowie one? (laughs) Carling to say. What time was that one, Joe? You've got to go high. And then really do. It's wonderful. It was very late. That's all I'm going to say. I just like the fact that your girlfriend might be a ghost. Oh, yeah. yeah. The new Australia ID card. Have you been uh, following that? This is different to the one that went to referendum in the 80s, though. Is it? it? Well, apparently. That's what they're saying. It's not Bob Hawke's. How did it go in the referendum? No. No Thumbs dice? down, yeah. Have we ever had a referendum that went, yep? Because uh, we lost the Republic one, went no dice. Yeah, that was because Steve Vizard got himself involved. Ah, really? And everyone just went, no. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but he's involved, so I don't want it. <laughs> uh, I don't Maybe know. Maybe it was a referendum on another series of Full Frontal or something. <laughs> you know, the, the thing is, when you've got Bronwyn Bishop, who... Is actually in the Liberal Party. The Bish. The party that are pushing the Australia ID mm. access card. Mm. Describing it as something that would have been useful in Nazi Germany. Uh, That's uh, not a thumbs up. Uh, it didn't pass the Nazi test. <laughs> it, she. Is how, there a test? Uh, yeah, that was. Yeah, she said there was a, some sort of test. <laughs> as if to say, you know, as if it trod on your civil liberties. Ah, uh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. Are all uh, government policies subjected to Bronwyn's Nazi <laughs> test? I'd like to. They should be. I don't know if many would survive. Yeah, I'm would not sure about that. Yeah. Should have her on. <laughs> yeah, that's where the trouble Subje- starts. You can subject our listeners <laughs> yeah. to it. We had that years ago. Do I ever tell you what happened with uh, Peter? To Reef and Martin Malloy. Reethy. Now, what was Reethy's go? Oh, lying mainly. <laughs> that was and mainly it. The phone card thing yeah. for him. 
was spelled the undoing. Right. Oh, yeah, he yeah. was the phone card guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it was the docs on Dubai, which... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that didn't help. <laughs> yeah, that didn't help. It's been erased from people's so what, memories. So what happened? <laughs> well, when we were doing Mark Malloy, mm-hmm. you know how we... It's like the whole thing with the, you know, ABC bias. Mm-hmm. You send up whoever's in power. Yes. Because they're the ones controlling our lives. Yeah, making the decisions. So we were doing a lot of uh, jokes about the Howard government. Um. And suddenly we got a call. And this is an election year. Um. And it was... Uh, there's a perception that your uh, your program is very anti the government, mm-hmm. and we think to redress the balance, we'd like you to have uh, Peter Reith on as a guest. Wow! Mick Malloy didn't take to that idea. Too, <laughs> oh right? no! <laughs> Mick Malloy's answer, and I'll have to censor what he actually said, was, uh, "Yeah, send him in. I'm only going to ask him one question, but why are you such an effing C?" <laughs> That'll be the only question we ask <laughs> over and over again. And it was the best show they did all year. <laughs> Booking fell through for some ah, reason. Why? Why? But we're heading into an election year. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's who gonna be who are we going to have on? I don't think we should, The best thing is not to have any of them on. Oh, yeah? Because then you're involved. Uh, Something we didn't get to earlier in the week is uh, they're starting to charge those kiddies who raided that video shop in, I think it was Noble Park That's in Victoria. Right. Yeah. Now, this happened while you were away. Disturbing footage, Ed, of uh, some kind of uh, uh, burnout event that got out of control. Police arrive and everyone's gone, let's go into Blockbuster and trash the joint. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. And there's security camera footage of mm. people fighting over, like, standees of Tony Danza. <laughs> <laughs> people wrestling <laughs> over VHS copies of Bikini Shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very sorry Raid. Terrible raid. And the two guys who they actually did bring into court, I mean, they're only young. You know, they're about yes. 19 years of age. Yeah. But they, they left court and went straight to the bar across the road. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, it's a good look. And then there was another guy who uh, was two hours late for court, and you could see that he'd spent most of his time on his hair and choice of outfit. <laughs> and so he's coming Choice out, of FUBU tracksuit. <laughs> and he was really angry with the journos. But at the same time, he was so happy to be on TV. Ah, yes. And you can see him already thinking about how popular this is going to be. Double-edged sword. So he was trying to do a lot of get out of my face gangster yeah, good talk. stuff. But he couldn't get rid of the big smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> it's great footage. But certainly, I mean, uh, how would you have gone, you know, on night duty on the video shop in your I, day? I yet? once caught, there was, a, there was like a spate of robberies when I was working at the video store. Yeah. And the owner said, that's okay, I've fixed the problem. And we said, oh, great. And we said, what is it? And uh, he pointed down to the ground. And there was one of those, you know those long cylindrical post packs? Yes. That he put a baseball bat inside of. Oh, no. And he said, look, if anyone comes along. Post tell, that. Tell, <laughs> post it to Batman. He'll know what to do. <laughs> and the idea was that we'd go, oh, look, there's money in the post thing. Open it and then smack them with the bat. Ah, but would it take too long? To- <laughs> it was an awkward system. Yeah, that's foolish. <laughs> I <would have> thought. <laughs> no. uh, but then I once caught a whole bunch of kids stealing stuff yeah. out of the video store. They were wearing kepper jeans, maybe keppers. Basically, uh, a tent made of denim oh, for your legs. Yes, that's uh, very good for shoplifting. Uh, especially the mustard ones. The mustard, <laughs> oh, the mustard. The, the mustard kepper was a must-have item when I was growing up. <laughs> And they stuffed, or you know, DVDs and lots of sort of two pack and NBA best dunks of '97 videos yeah, into yeah. themselves, and they were walking rather awkwardly. <laughs> so I said, "Oh, listen, you know, I got to have a look at what's in your keppers." Hmm. He went, "Nah, get stuffed." <laughs> Ran out. But what they'd done is they'd parked the getaway car out the front of the store in the Patrick Swayze spot, <laughs> yeah, or in the Bruce Willis spot, <laughs> Swayze. <laughs> so I wandered out and took down the number plate, and we got all the NBA videos back. <laughs> Fantastic! I was a hero. <laughs> The boss that I worked for, he's a lovely guy, but there was two shops, and one was like the cool, kind of like laid back shop, and one was like the ultra intense, yes. you know, everything must be incredibly tidy. Mm. And we got to work one day, and there was a huge note, gaffer tape to the counter that just said in massive letter, pick up bits off floor. <laughs> and the idea was that we went around with our hands, because he didn't trust the vacuum cleaner, right. and pick up all the little bits off the floor we Individual could see. Individual mm. bits of lint. Oh, look, there's that copy of Taking Care of Business with Jim Belushi. <laughs> Get rid of Those it. Those kids must have dropped it from their campus. <laughs> What's the good Ambo awesome. movie? There was that Martin Scorsese. Yeah, bringing out the dead. Yeah, 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 I could never get through that. Yeah. You're talking the comedy? Yeah, there was one in the yeah, 70s called was. Mother Jugs and Speed. <laughs> That's what you've told me about Who this. Who played one. Mother Jugs? Well, you've got Mother yeah. was played by uh, Bill Cosby. Jugs? Bobcat Gothway? Guess. Who would be Jugs? <laughs> it's a woman. Oh, uh, It's Raquel Welch. Oh, yeah. Of course it is. Speed, Harvey Keitel. Wow. Speed. But it's just for the whole movie, you can just enjoy Bill Cosby 
calling Raquel Welsh jugs all the time. <laughs> Look, I don't normally picture things like this, but I'm picturing like a shot of the kind of a bumpy road. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and the back door's open, and then the oh. bed on wheels oh, yeah. rolls out, and two people are having sex on it. Oh, yeah. And they don't realise they're going down a road, maybe a billboard. Any of that? I think that's the whole movie. Great. It's a lot of that. Great. It's very disorderly orderly. S- steal that, gangsters. <laughs> but it's just Bill Hey, jug. <laughs> <laughs> the whole film. Dave Graney has joined myself, oh, yeah. Ed Cavalier, Richard Marson. Welcome aboard, Dave. I've been enjoying the new two hour get this, Tony. Dangerous gigs. Have <laughs> yeah. you played any dangerous gigs lately, Dave? Oh, musicians are usually, uh, you know, respected people. Oh, okay. I've played a couple of shows where you're loading out and people start throwing knives around and really? like bang, boing in the thing mm. next to you. But that usually adds a bit of excitement. <laughs> That's great. Bit of a to the feel. occasion, yeah. <laughs> one was in um, one of my few trips to America. A guy looked like Waylon Jennings and I, I felt cool to have a guy look like sure. Waylon Jennings <laughs> in the vicinity. But yeah, he was throwing a knife around and uh, <laughs> snorting some coke and that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. It's always yeah, good I, during I a felt, show. I felt I have arrived. <laughs> yeah, this is good. The other one was in Adelaide and yeah, a guy just throwing knives when we were loading up some gear. That was... It's become your thing. When Hindley Street was um, really yeah. rough. It, it's it's yeah. at least pretty rough. But. Yeah. Yep. Is it? Richard Marsons walked those mean streets. Mm. Yeah. In fact, I used to, uh, the club that I used to DJ at was off Hindley Street. You could it? not <laughs> walk down that street without someone w- trying to punch you in the face. Yeah. 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 It's still abduct slightly you. seedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> abduct they've got, you. They've got a yeah. university on it. Yeah, they just drag you down the alley and kick the hell out of you. Yeah. <laughs> but, Richard would be found hours <clears> later <throat> cowering behind the mall's balls. It was. if <laughs> in a, There were many... Things. I was a South, grew up in South Australia, and, and the rockers in Adelaide used to wear um, uh, see-through uh, black t-shirts. You know, that were mesh kind oh, of yeah, things. Oh yeah, yeah, mesh. And I always These associate that with really mesh. tough guys. But, really. <laughs> and then in my in my band, I, I brought out one one day, and I was wearing it. And they say, "You look so gay." And I was, "Hey." The tough guys wear this <laughs> thing. It's not the village people. Yeah, what about the chaps, Dave? The tough guys? Yeah, I, had, I tried the chaps too, but you know, what about, I couldn't have the conviction to You're uh, from back Mount, that one up. Mount Gambia. Oh, yeah. And do you get back there still? Oh, you? yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. No sign of that statue yet? No, You're second no in the no. queue behind Robert Helpman, really, aren't you, for a statue at Mount <laughs> Gambia? Right, yeah. Anybody would love a statue of themselves mm, you know, yeah. but in, are you in a lounge room or something. No you know? key to the city? You can't just walk in somewhere and just... Like, oh, yeah, I got the you, keys to the city once. You yeah. just go into the milk bar and just help yourself to a couple of big M's out of the fridge, walk out without paying? Can you do that and flash in the key? I, I have waited until the time comes when I really need the keys to the city to use it, but I did get the keys to the city and a lovely Mount Gambia tie. And, oh, I, yes. and the, the mayor, he's now passed away. And the mayoress made devils on horsebacks for us, and he chased Claire Moore around the mayoral chambers in a very uh, really Les Patterson kind of way. It was a top <laughs> night out, but uh, <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Uh, just while we're in the wardrobe, you've probably heard about our idea for April, uh, which is to get the whole nation wearing capes to work. That's good. Yeah. During the month, mm, of April. not just to work. No, but out and about in the streets. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see like someone in a business suit mm. with a you know lime green cape. Oh, that'd be cool. Fluttering the, the, the fellow cool. in Wolf Mother should wear a cape. Oh, oh, yeah. The keyboard player oh, the especially. Keyboard, player. Yeah. 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 keyboard yeah. players sh- must wear capes and wizards hats. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, it's, they're not taken have seriously. Seen, have you ever seen a keyboard player in a wizard's hat? Well, there was. I've always wanted to. Ed, yeah, so. yeah, life has disappointed me. In, <laughs> Many yeah. occasions, wherever I've turned. Well, the most famous keyboard player with uh, Kate was Rick Wakeman. Oh, yes. 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 Of, of yes. I don't he, know about the cap. Though. Famously, he, he's, let, he's let his mystique fall in the last decade, and, and he would talk about while the guitarist or bass player was doing a 30-minute solo, he would send a roadie out to get an Indian curry takeaway for him. <laughs> so in the middle of the mysticism of yes, he was a, a beer-drinking, <laughs> curry-drinking guy. But with at least a cape and a wizard's cap hat on. But now he hosts comedy. Yeah, yeah. There's it's, a show on Foxtel. It's from a few years ago called Live at Jongleurs. Oh, yeah. And it's Rick Wakeman of Journey to the Centre of the Earth yeah. fame on a keyboard bringing on comedy acts. I don't like that. So there was years of prog rock yeah. and three keyboards. Oh, and yeah. The, you know, the sort of uh, synths, a oh, go-go yeah. sound. Yeah. Now, rat da 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 But he can make that last for two and a half minutes. No, it's good stuff. Let's hope we don't see 50 Cent descending oh, no, to that, no, you know, letting his bad boy, <laughs> you know, 
aura slip to that yeah. extent. Mm. It'll be downgraded. Rick's also a Christian, which okay. you know, undercuts all of that for me. Okay. Well, what about this picture I've been sent of me with a cape on from the House of Capes? People it's very take long. Impressive. People are starting to. Which one have you got on, Tone? I think that's the summer lightweight cape. I'm not your, sure. Your posture in that and the Cuban heeled boots. <laughs> <laughs> that was created look, by. It's like Zorro. <laughs> Rhiannon. <laughs> well, we'll put it up on the you website. You look like Zorro. Mm. Quite often, I look like Zorro. Ooh. And Dave, have you been following the long gestation of the new Guns N' Roses album, Chinese Democracy? I have heard of it. The guitarist in my band, the lurid yellow mist, Stuart Pereira, he slept outside a shop when the uh, two albums, User Illusion, oh, came yeah, out. Yeah. But uh, even he is uh, dropped off of the... Uh... Oh, no. It's now 10 years into its making. Mm. The original uh, title was 2000 Intentions. Uh, the year 2000 is, you know, in the rear vision <laughs> mirror now, so it's Chinese Democracy, the most expensive album ever made, $18 million. What is that? What does God. that get you? Not counting musicians, retainers, salaries for engineers, technicians, and hangers-on. So $18 million has been spent, what, before he's even in the studio virtually? How much are the hangers-on getting? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't I, could be a, I could be a hanger-on, <laughs> tell you what. you spend $18 mil on an album, Doug? Uh, um Oh, there is a band from Germany called Ein Stürzender Neubaut, and um, their guitarist Blixer Bargeld was in Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and they did an album once where it was an art project, and uh, they wanted it to record the most expensive sounds they could, and one of them was, um, you know, those tape players they used to use in making movies, the yeah, N- yeah. Nagamuchi or something there. Right. They just dropped one from the, the top floor of the Hansa Studios in Berlin, and and one was down the bottom holding a microphone <laughs> to record it being smashed to pieces. And was that the single? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the album? <laughs> Fantastic. I think that was more. They were trying to spend as much as they could, but this is uh, just run-of-the-mill um, things getting a bit out of hand, I think. Yeah. And it's been going on so long that uh, session artists have you know, arrived, had nothing to do, been dismissed. Even Buckethead has mm. bailed. Oh, not yeah. Buckethead. Yeah. Back Buckethead. in 2004, yeah. he jumped ship. <laughs> not but, Buckethead. But there is talk that Chinese democracy may finally be coming out right. this year. Yeah, I think it would be a big mistake to release it. I think leave it I there. As, in my mind, it's the best yeah. music ever yeah. that's ever existed. Yeah. It's like a nuclear bomb. That They're kind of uh, mm. best... It, Kept in the background with their latent power to destroy humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them off. It'll be a bit of a letdown, really. <laughs> There's that great uh, R&B artist, D'Angelo, who's only done... D'Angelo. Cut, D'Angelo's done about two albums, and, and he did one album where he just worked out and smoked spliffs for uh, two years, and the, the album was worth it in the end. What was it called? I think it's, uh, there's brown sugar and then voodoo. I think voodoo is the second one, Fantastic. but it has a great video where he's he's nude, and and it's one shot and he's singing the song and he gradually makes one muscle in his lower abdomen uh, flex. Really, as wow. he's singing. Yeah. Is that on YouTube, Dave? <laughs> Good, Dave. Yeah, it was on MTV. <laughs> My well. favourite name in America I came across was Dwayne. Great way to jazz up Wayne. Do <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> D apostrophe can jazz anything mm. up. Yeah. Was that a woman or a man? It was a dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. A dude. De Tony. De, t- <laughs> De Richard and sadly dead. <laughs> Doesn't quite work for you. We want to hear about your yeah. Chinese democracy. Have you been working on a project that's just never going to be finished? <laughs> right. At our place, it's just the lawn. That never happens. Oh, when I have no. to use a machete to get to the clothesline, <laughs> that's when I might consider a bit of lawn mowing. What about the kitchen, Tony? Have you ever been in there at your place? <sighs> I've seen photos. <laughs> <laughs> How's it looking? I pop in there occasionally yeah, to make yeah. some toast. Do you <laughs> cook dinner at all, Tony? Uh, about once uh, a month, I might have a crack at something. What do you yeah. cook? I I can do a, a steak. Tea. A cup oh, of tea I'm pretty yeah. good at. I need a diagram, yeah. but I'm willing to have a crack. <laughs> yeah. uh, have you got a Chinese democracy, Dave? Surely there's something Chinese in Chinese democracy. Something what is it? Explain it to me a again, A project Tony. that probably will never be finished. That's perhaps too ambitious to even have been embarked upon in the first place. Yeah. Just fantasies of life on my own island in the South Pacific. Oh, I Rather know the bloke. Like, uh, I know the bloke for you, Dave. Yeah, yeah you got an island. Uh... It, Ed's tentacles of power and <laughs> influence <laughs> stretch in many directions. Check him out. Look at this bloke here. What's his mm. name? Well, it doesn't matter. Mm. Uh, Port Douglas-based island broker. Oh. He says that owning oh. an island is the ultimate status mm. symbol. <laughs> 
for a mere $64.7 million, you could get your own uh, island. Marlon Brando had an island for several Brando's years. Eventually island. outgrew it. Now you're talking. <laughs> Ed, what's this I'm hearing you've been replaced in the KFC, Ed? What's going on there? Saw it last night. Uh, the, the sort of same kind of opener. I was like, oh, here we go. Maybe we're going to try to replay the ad. It's coming, making a comeback. I you knew know? Gus, Ed. No, yeah. And then, but an- without you. Another guy walks in, like much more handsome, uh, normal hair. <laughs> The relationship is nowhere near as homoerotic as it used to be. That's wrong, where I come from. And I was thinking, oh, this is going to be like a tough bloke's burger ad. Thankfully, KFC have come to their senses. Yeah. And a big song and dance ensues about how delicious the burgers are. And in the end, there's just a shot of the new Gus, you know, pseudo Gus, yeah. kind of looking down the barrel of the camera like, oh, didn't expect that to happen. I would have killed that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The old Gus, pink shirt, big hair, Lego hair, weird face. I would have nailed that. You should have locked down rights to that character. That's the yeah, problem. You know what? I'm doing it on stage. Mm. Cause I'm doing a casino tour. Oh, are you just yeah, yeah, one yeah. man show? Two man show. I need the other guy. I need Paul. Uh, so <laughs> Gus and Paul. Mm. An hour of conversation <laughs> with <laughs> Gus and Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will the uh, you know the lack of Gus and the new ads be mm. reflected in sales? Do you think? I, it's going I, to impact. I'm predicting the end of KFC. Are you just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to say too much. But they can't stand alone on coleslaw and Mountain Dew. Hello there, Paul Ashton. Hello there, Ed Cavalier. Uh, for those of the we well, got a round of applause, yeah. brother. Uh, for the uninitiated, you're my friend in real life, and on yes. screen we are Gus and I've forgotten your character's name. <laughs> how, how could you? It was Dave. Yeah, that's right, Dave from the KFC ad. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, did you have you seen the new version with all the singing that we've been axed from? I've heard. I've heard as much. And um, I don't know about you, Ed, but I'm pretty bitterly disappointed. So what's happened here, Paul? I mean, you weren't on the radio, you know, making fun of your own character. It was only Ed. Has Ed taken you down as well? No, no. Look, uh, we we did have discussions at the time, Tony, about um, how we'd approach it together. Uh, It just so happens that I'm not on radio to um, (laughs) share it with as many people as Ed. But believe me, in my own little world, um, I've shared it with a lot of people. Good on you, Paul. Hey, so you're up for the casino tour? I think the casino tour would be great as long as we don't restrict it to Australia. I think Las Vegas, here we come. So what's the act? I mean, you're ordering burgers. That'd be the first yep. 30 course, seconds. And then um, we'd be at home, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Then like, there's at home. Then there's soft serves. I mean, don't. there's a lot of humour oh, that you can true. get out of soft mm, serves. That's true. It's us with a soft serve machine. That'll wow. go an hour. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then probably and interval. I also think some interpretive dance in the second act. Yeah, you're, you you're on your own there, brother. Uh, you know, yeah. But you know how, like, at Crown Casino, they've got those, um, those little waterfalls that yeah. shoot you know, we could just dance amongst them or something, like more of an expressionistic yeah, yeah. version of the first half through, you know through what, dance. I wasn't quite prepared for you to say this on air, bro, because the way, <laughs> just the way this show works, if you bring Sorry. stuff like that up, uh, at some yeah. point, either Tony's going to make a cockney sketch about us doing that, <laughs> or we're probably going to have to do it somewhere on a flatback truck. Thanks for Thanks, joining Paul. us today, Paul. No worries. What about this thing that's in the TV week that's full of... Uh... Gift oh, yeah, what is that thing? You've been carrying that around for a while. It's the Bright Life Australia catalogue. Oh, it's catalog. just the one Cecilia gave us. And being a cat lover, Ed, surely you're going to yes. be purchasing the cat tunnel. Look at that. What does it do? A fold upable cat tunnel. Yeah. What do I do with it? You lay it on the ground. Yeah. Seconds of fun for your cat, that. Eh? <laughs> cats in it. What is it? It doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't make them go anywhere. It's just the tunnel. So what happens? They walk to one end, mm. poke their heads out, they yeah. walk back to the other end. You've pretty much exhausted the fun right there, I would have thought. <laughs> How many cats can you get in there? That's the challenge. Let's find out tomorrow, (laughs) as long as it's short. It's 130 (laughs) centimetres long. Your average cat, uh, if if its tail's up, is probably 20 centimetres long. Uh, You know, tip of nose to bottom. Uh, And then, so you get seven cats, a little under seven cats in there. We'll find out at this time tomorrow. What about diabetic socks? That's what they're selling. <laughs> what? I Insulin think... filled? No, I'm not sure how they work. <laughs> That's pretty good. Cecilia seems to have circled a product called a personal massager. What, What's that about? What do you mean? <laughs> look at that. Look. Just look. That is the item. I need a massage. That's the item she circled and it's clearly... Oh, oh hang very, on. It's very just personal. Wait a second. It's a vibrator, let's <laughs> say it. <laughs> and this person doesn't really know how to use it. No, that's clearly that. not where it goes. Yeah. That's oh, that's a bit rude. But isn't if you it? call it a personal massager and, and sort of appear to be going it with your shoulder, then you can basically advertise that product in a family magazine. That's unbelievable. Oh, sorry, Cecilia circled it for our attention. <laughs> oh, okay. Wasn't an intended purchase. This is pretty good. This thing. Yeah. Dolphin clock.
The David Hicks Street Theatre has uh, attracted a lot of uh, calls today. How was it? I haven't seen it. What happened? Well, it's all for a worthy cause. You know, you've got yeah, to get Hicksy. behind them. Yeah, Hicksy. Hicksy but we, as... Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Do we like Hicksy? Like, in general, does uh, Australia I... like Hicksy or hate him? Haven't really read the buyer. No, okay. I mean, the jury's still out. Yes. But I think is we, is we, the tabloid we... jury still out? It's a human rights issue. Yeah, it's, it's more it's the, the dangling of photographs of a hung Saddam Hussein in uh, front of his face yeah. while he's in a cage. Yeah, yeah, that'll teach him. So, uh, so what happened to the street theatre? Well, as always with Australian street theatre, there's always mm. got to be a rogue element. <laughs> so you've got a bloke in a sort of American flag nappies. Check, that's fine. Good, good. You've got an evil Uncle Sam. Good, yep. Great. Yep. Pushing the cage, Ned Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No idea. <laughs> Uh, did no one in um, uh, sort of nuclear sort of fallout shelter? There would have been where... a couple of skeletons. Yeah, yeah come on, They're guys. They're probably booked for a children's party. <laughs> but Ned Kelly, and I was looking, I was going, why is Ned Kelly pushing? Yeah, how do you and get you know run? why? Because his costume was so expensive and elaborate looking. He's got there. I reckon no one had the heart to say, it's just not, it doesn't make any sense. Can well, we put an American flag on it? No, no, no. Ned Kelly or nothing. It's nah. too expensive. Yeah, it's yeah. A foul. <laughs> Sorry. I painted the uh, cornflakes boxes brown myself, <laughs> cut the hole out, and I'm here. Glenn Robbins is here. Yes. Con man, uh, oh, alleged con man. Is he, is he, no, he's convicted con man. Convicted con man. <laughs> One of those will do. Yeah. <laughs> Say alleged, it gets you out of everything. Well, it's in, okay, alleged con man Peter Foster. He's busted. And he's, here he is. Look at that, Glenn. There he is on the way in the car getting yeah. taken to somewhere. Bring me know, up to speed. What's, like he, what's the... Well, he's been jumping from country to country. In just Fiji, in I undies. saw him last. Yeah. 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 In his undies, <laughs> leaping yeah. from small South Pacific atoll to island <laughs> to fjord. Yeah. Always in the derps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Finally been snaffled up. Put a T-shirt on, son. You're off yeah. to jail. Now, there's going to be a telly movie. Yes. We know there's going to be a telly movie. Yeah. So I'm Hang thinking... Hang on. I'm starting You're making to... that up? Surely you and I be. both you know, know there's the going to be a telly movie. movie. You reckon? Of course Glenn. there will be. <laughs> okay. Who's going to be Peter Foster? Now, we've got a good record on this. I guessed who was going to play Bradley John Murdoch Brilliantly. in the Falconio movie. Richard Carter, which I based yep. solely on his startling resemblance to the yeah, man. Definitely. And you got it. Got it right. Let's see if we can do it for Foster. Okay, Robbins, you'll get asked... I'm real, I won't get... You will get... You, what, what, you, you will think get, I come across as a... No, you're like a better looking version than oh, yeah, him that yeah. people like. Oh, but there's a lot of derp work. Exactly. Because there's a lot of leaping off jetties in your derps That's if you're going to be Peter Foster. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, Russell Coy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. The Troy Dan G Street. Yeah, I'm up for it. Yeah, not he's up for it. Peter yeah. Foster, he's up yeah. for it. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, yeah. so, Keep but if, if it's not you, I reckon yeah. that our good friend Rob Carlton is a dead ringer. Oh, yes. He's a dead ringer. It's not bad. Yeah. Captain Carlton would be perfect for yeah, that. Yeah. If, oh, hang on. if people are wondering who he is, he's, he's in the an ad at the moment. Uh, he's in the Qantas ads at the moment. Mm. Or Larry Miller from the Christopher oh, Guest yes. movie. That would be good. Yeah, it's not a bad one for Foster. Okay. I think Larry Emder. Larry <laughs> Emder. I told you Larry Emder gave me an acting class once. Did he? Yeah, yeah. I was doing a short film and Larry Emder was the acting coach. Okay. And he, he came really? up, Oh, yeah. He came up to me and said, Now, the thing about acting, Ed, is it's all in the smile. Yeah. And I said, You're right, Larry. <laughs> He's alright though It's amazing we, we like I've Larry. never like seen Larry. a production of Macbeth Containing the phrase come on down before <laughs> It's brilliant But right now it's time for <laughs> ah, Neighbours And war <laughs> Yes it's It's um Yeah It's a lot of it It's a fair bit of it about Neighbours at war It's uh Brand new segment. With no one left. Here, I'll get this. I would love it if a band of mercenaries had a go at Ramsey Street. <laughs> Do you get into neighbour trouble, Glenn? Oh, when I was growing up, we had terrible neighbour problems. Well, they believed that our willow tree yes. was getting into their pipes. Really? And then it really came to a head when one day we got some pictures out of a dirty magazine, oh, yes. put them out on the street and scrunched them up a bit and then waited for him to walk past and he picked them up and started looking at the dirty pictures and we banged on the window and laughed at him. And <laughs> That's that just... good. That just Good riled job. him. You were going, you're a weirdo. You're a pervert. You're looking at dirty pictures You'll in the street. You'll pick him up off the street. Yeah, and what are you? Eh? You sicker. What a plan. Right, yeah. How much waiting would have been that's involved? Oh, uh, you know, had to go through a lot of magazines to, <laughs> yeah. to get the right shot. <laughs> Neighbour trouble, Ed Cavalier, surely not. You know what, Tone? No. Have you ever Did lived you? in a block of flats? where it's, say, 22 flats, and there's trouble about people putting Hang rubbish on. in someone else's <laughs> wheel. I've got one now. I've just remembered. <laughs> Mum became like the something or other of the building, and she found that somebody was living in the little antechamber next to the bins. <laughs> 
and they'd set up a bed. Right. And all they was had, it Peter Foster? It was. <laughs> all they had in there was a bed, stack of dirty magazines, Robin style, yeah. right? <laughs> And a television that they'd somehow hooked up to the aerial. And she was the one that had to kick them out. That but was I, the only thing. I reckon she met him and made friends with him. Oh, yeah, yeah. He gave us some mags. Oh, yeah, we got yeah. heaps of... When he was finished yeah. with the mags, we got them. He's now part of Ed Cavalier's confusing <laughs> family tree, which we will discuss Too on the show. Too much of a nice You guy. tone, I reckon it happens every day. Oh, I yeah. have usually this neighbour trouble, but it's all about stuff like that. Like putting... Like once the bins are out... Free reign. Does it matter really if you're putting nope. rubbish in someone else's bin? They're going to be collected. So you wouldn't mind if you saw someone putting in, say, a dead cat in your bin? If once it was out, it's fine. I'm not interested. Two well, dead cats? The concept of a dead cat slightly disturbing, Glenn, but no, how, I wouldn't what, care. Once how many, it's out the front, it's just going to be picked up. How many dead animals do you draw the line? <laughs> <laughs> what if they've got a sack of them? The breaking point is if they can get it in and the lid can go back down. I don't like oh, it when they put it in right, yeah. and the lid is halfway yeah. up. You're going, nah, you've, 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 you've killed the line. And I did that this week. I did it over the road and I couldn't get the lid down. And I went, you know what? Nah, out of the pool, Robbins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marsland. I've actually, not a neighbours at war, but a good sort of neighbours experience is, you know, Google Earth? Yeah. Okay, Google Earth is a computer yep. program where you can look at satellite imagery yes. of your own street or anywhere in the world. What you can do is uh, Google Earth your street and then look for the neighbours with the pools in their backyard oh. and then commence sucking up to them over summer oh. so they can invite you over how, for a pool party. Do, how close does the Google Earth camera, like, could it get close enough to see someone putting their rubbish in your wheelie bit? Oh, of see, that would be cool. But oh. surely, <laughs> like everything on the internet, that will just eventually be about zooming in on people's breasts, won't it? I mean, it's an elaborate the horn, way to do it. It's Where's the biggest the down blouse of history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> down blousing from Google Earth. From oh, right. <laughs> camera on shoe, yeah. camera up in sky. Sure. Same <laughs> thing. You're, You're a covered. weirdo. Hello, Ben. How you going, guys? Really good. Talk us through your wall. We had a fight with our neighbours over our pet rooster, Who's Your Daddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and would this be because it goes off every morning at an ungodly hour? Oh, it might have been. It yeah. might have been. And, <laughs> They're just the sounds of the country, I yeah, reckon. That's so true. Right here in the city. We have to build a rooster box by the end. A specially designed yeah. rooster well, box. a soundproof there. booth. A soundproof booth for our rooster. Could you record an album in there? <laughs> <laughs> Are there egg cartons on the wall? That's just mocking the rooster, that is. No, there's a bit of carpet involved. And, um... So at dawn, you hear this. <laughs> That's about it. It's a very sad crow in the morning, guys. Hello, Michelle. How are you? I'm um, well, thanks. Uh, what's going on? Uh, we used to live next door to a woman who, we'd heard rumours she was a little bit nuts. She used to hose mm-hmm. down the um, landlady who lived out the back if she had visitors. <laughs> right. But, um, what? She used to like hose it. the visitors she down? She used to hose the visitors down. That was the nicest That's thing she ever did. That's <laughs> That's being a wally with water. Uh, yeah, but the best my husband was outside once and she was out the front and she came up and she started saying, I just need a hug, I just need a hug. Aww. So she hugged him just at the moment her boyfriend was coming around the corner in his ute. <laughs> and uh, so he tried to run my husband down and we knew that it happened to the other neighbour as well. Aww. But, but? Goes it's on. better. What? Christmas time, my husband's standing at the toilet as you do, mm-hmm. door open. Mm-hmm. She walks into the house mm-hmm. with a box of chocolates mm-hmm. Walks up to him at the toilet, mm. says, Merry Christmas. And we said, can you get out of the house, please? And she said, but I just want to give you a present. And we never had anything to do with her. So she walked out of the house. And we sat down thinking, OK, what a weird woman. Turns up half an hour later, naked, with the present. Oh, she so squirted we'll... her with the hose. Yeah. No. <laughs> so we rejected her again. So she went home. Right, so your husband didn't take advantage? He would have. but uh, <laughs> He would have. <laughs> So he not to. Um, Can we get her in here? No, yeah. no. The, yeah. your fr- ask her to come into the studio now. Sounds great. Outside, Use some chocolate. She, just uh, she came back down. again. She came back again. She came back again, but she just put a note under the door saying she was going to report us to the police because yeah. we were living illegally, which we weren't. It sounds like you are living illegally. What's going on in the background? <laughs> that's that's the illegal child of... Uh, I've got sitting there eating illegal lunch. Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Dodgy your place. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> that oh, is a today tonight reenactment I want to see. Yeah. Andrea Powell is with us. Yes, I am, Tony. She, I'm still here. Andrea, you know, you're so getting near 40. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned. Some strange things have been happening, you know, like flab, for instance. And also, oh. there's these strange things on my torso, these yeah. kind of like round Patches of skin that are, I don't know what they are. What are they doing? I went to the doctor about it and um, 
because I thought I better get that checked out. You know, it could be cancerous or something. I don't know. Anyway, she looked and I said, "What do you think these are? They're actually between my breasts." No. So Ow. there we go. I know, sexy. Would they be um, nipples? No, <laughs> that's that. My nipples are actually on my world. breasts, oh, okay. so that's kind of they it's seem to good. be working well. Are they but, a tattoo you don't remember getting? No, I don't know. What, no. Anyway, the doctor took. I said, "What do you think this is?" And she mm. zoomed in. She went, mm, "No idea." Anything else I can do for you? Yeah, no. $55, not even a, a referral to a dermatologist. That was it. She was like, oh, all right, all the best. So that, I've got the these best. crop circles between my jugs. <laughs> I don't know what they are. And yeah, there'll be photos on the website. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that's great. And, uh, mm. yeah. And also, the other thing about turning 40, I feel like I'm turning into a technophobe. I don't know what uh, what yeah. is the attraction with MySpace. It's unreal. Mm. Yeah. I had a, is it, Ed, is it? Oh, it's all yeah. about friends, isn't it? 561 I, I've got. Oh, I don't yeah. need more friends. I need more. I mean, this friend of mine, he's, only in his, he's still in his 20s, he came over and he said, I've got to set you up on my space. You'll love it. You'll be addicted. You'll never mm. get off. He was quite wrong. I've never looked at it. <laughs> Who might, could be bothered? You might have heaps of friends you don't know about. I couldn't care less. Look, I'm happy to send you know a couple of emails, you yeah. know, and, but other than that, I'm out the door. I'm a busy woman. I'm moving. I'm not sitting next to a computer posting photos. 40, you don't need more (laughs) friends. You need more blankets. (laughs) Hey, Tony, do you go to the gym? Ed goes to the gym. I feel like I go vicariously by sitting next to Ed. Yeah, yeah. You do go. You look buff. Yeah. Thank you very much. What's your um your uh, CGI uh, whatever it is? You Computer know, generated imagery. <laughs> <laughs> they have that now. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good actually. Me on a motorbike. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Jumping stuff. <laughs> Measuring I fat. I kick ass. Uh, I don't know. Do you, I, do you lift weights? Can I ask you that? Uh, yep. Do you grunt when you lift weights? Uh, I yeah. No. What? You don't. Oh I, no, I don't. But I, I know guys that do. Why do guys have to make this? It's, 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 it grabs, it's it grabs attention. Draw attention to the abs. Yeah, yeah. But women don't make that noise at the gym. They don't go along like, and heavy enough. I mean, I just reckon, that, yeah, you're being a little bit ambitious there's with a, your weights if you have to make that noise. Well, there's a guy uh, at the gym I go to, and, you know, if you're listening, don't bash me. Uh, he, and he wears, he's like the classic stereotype of a gym guy. He wears a bandana backwards, <laughs> and it's yeah. only the same one every other day. So it's filthy. That'd smell yeah. good. Then it, there's orange goggles. Uh, like so pale orange goggles, then a singlet, which is just like a piece of floss down the front and mm. another piece of floss for down the back. Mm, orange really floss. Really hairy chest and back. Oh, stop it. I'm feeling <laughs> aroused. On the gear, so he's quite massive. He's on the gear? I think wow. he's on the juice. Oh. On I the went juice. With, okay. I went Has he got friend. acne? I refuse to get close enough to find out. <laughs> but when I last saw him, he was berating a friend of mine for not putting a piece of gym stuff back mm, properly. Angry. Steroid. Very angry. Angry steroid man on the roids. Well, but last, void rage. Last time I saw him, he'd got some mates. He'd got his own little posse going. Oh, that's oh, cool. He must be a MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought it up because I flicked over the telly last night and I caught a promo for a show coming up on the Crime and Investigation Network yes. um, about a guy who took mm-hmm. his bodybuilding a little too far. Mm-hmm. And this is what the promo said. The man whose arms exploded <laughs> premieres February 17 on CI. <laughs> wow. That's true. It's the man whose arms exploded coming up on the CI Network. Oh, I once saw, we'd t- written that? I saw two guys in the gym once. <laughs> <laughs> and that one was sort of doing arm curls, and he was lifting his lap. Quite a heavy weight. He was there with a mate, and his mate goes, "Looking big, John," <laughs> and John goes, "Feeling big." Whoa. Oh, oh. In Cavalry, what were you sticking in your mouth a moment ago? I found in the studio this thing where you... It's, it's a finger toothbrush, yeah. I think. A you finger stick toothbrush. stick this kind of little mm. sleeve on your finger. Like a finger glove. Yeah, like, you know, like a fluv. <laughs> and it's got like a cat's tongue kind of consistency on one side, mm. and they've sprayed it with... The Oral B or some other brand of right. toothpaste, mm. and you just you can do it anywhere. You need to brush your teeth with it. it. No, you don't do it anywhere. I'm pretty sure you need to be locked in a bathroom solo doing that job, Ed. I don't <laughs> think you need to be doing it in front of me. I'm bilious. It is as at home in the studio as it is in the boudoir as it is in the bathroom. Mm. You just you go scrape away tone, scrape away, and then look at me. Look at that minty fresh. Yeah. Is this because they're just needing new things to try and? Because, you know, so. Tartier has been mastered. Mm. Whitening th- stuff. That's pretty Tartier. much running its course. Tartier sauce on your, in yeah, your toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> Tartier control. Is that tartar? Tartar. Oh, well, pardon me. Tartier control. I just thought it was because... Is sauce invading your mouth? I thought I was full. <laughs> Protect yourself. I was being attacked by condiments, I assume. <laughs> but now I've they go... I've got gherkins between my teeth. <laughs> We've got your teeth right. You need to scrape away at your tongue now. Yeah, apparently. that's what it was. Where does it end? Your ass, no doubt. No. <laughs>
I had someone uh, show me a product in the States, Ask Bleach. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, right. so, yeah, oh that's... a bit of anal bleaching. I couldn't. Mm. I was. Oh, I bought it, but I couldn't believe it. <laughs> See, that's how far they've had to go. I'm with... the spokesman now, but I couldn't believe it. There's nothing left in the mouth to wipe. <laughs> <laughs> Get this. It's blown out to two hours, 11 to one weekdays on the Triple M Network.